Hi, uh, my name is Javier Herbas and I'm going to be presenting the results of a project that I just finished where I tried to predict uh, flight delays using machine learning. This is the outline of my presentation, so it's quite a simple one, an introduction with the objectives, the data gathering and the preprocessing, exploratory data analysis, the modeling, model evaluation, summary and recommendations, and then I'll close with the way forward for my project. Flight delay has become a very important subject for air transportation all over the world because of the associated financial losses that the aviation industry is continually going through. According to the Bureau of Transportation Statistics of the US, over 20% of the US flights were delayed during 2018, and this accounted for nearly 41 billion US dollars. This is taking into account all of the 58 um, airlines that fly domestically within the US. These delays cause inconveniences, not only to airlines, but also to passengers. They cause financial losses and increase stress within the passengers. My studies want to be focused on the passenger and not the airlines. One of the questions that I always ask myself is if it's actually possible to predict when a flight will be delayed even before it comes out in the departure board, so that I actually don't have to go to the airport and waste my time. So that takes us to the objectives of the project, which is design a model that predicts flight delays before they are even announced on the departure boards. In terms of the data that I use, this comes from Kaggle. It's a data set that covers 10 years, um, from 2009 until 2018. It has, it's divided in 10 different files, so one file per year, and it has an average of 28 categories per file, with a minimum of 1 million rows per file. So that's quite a large data set. I had to um, select a subset of this data set because of the size, and I only selected one year, 2018, which had approximately 7.2 million rows, so after my data set was cleaned and pre-processed, what I did is I filtered the data to only have the top 20 destinations in terms of number of, number of arriving uh, flights. And that reduced the size of the data to approximately 4.2 million rows, which still is quite a large data set. So what differentiates my model from everything that has been done and has been published online? No category that will imply passengers already in the play or a delay announced on the departure boards were actually considered. The result of this is that my accuracy is gonna be lower but at the same time, this might be a little bit more useful because you won't have to be sitting on the plane or being already in the airport waiting for the departure um, boards to announce that your flight is going to be delayed. So that's an advantage, but it might look a little bit less attractive when it comes to the accuracy values. This data set had a lot of categoric, uh, categoricals, as you can imagine, such as the day, month, origin, destinations, and anything that is related to time. It's an imbalanced data set. This is a binary classification problem, as you can see on the plot. You can see that on one side you have on time, which is going to be a zero, and then flights arriving delayed, which is going to be a one, and that's almost a two to one ratio, so severely imbalanced. Additionally, to those 28 categories that I already had, over 15 different features were engineered for exploratory data analysis. So this is quite a rich data set um, that gives you the possibility of doing a lot, a lot of EDA. So this is just to give you a flavor of what you can do. So all of these plots classify different features by the airlines. So if we concentrate on the orange bars, we're going to just first look at the two ones in the top um, left. You'll see the first one is going to be total number of flights, and the second one is the total number of delayed flights. See that Delta Airline is the one that I'm highlighting, and it's top five in both of them. This might sound quite bad, because you have a lot of flights, but at the same time, you have a lot of flights that are delayed. But this is actually, uh, it gives you the wrong information. When we look at total delayed time, so basically adding all of the numbers that your flights have been delayed, you see that Delta Airlines actually dead last. So it's not bad. It's like they make for all of these delays that actually make up to it. Then you look here, you've got the average delay time. You see again that Delta Airlines is quite well positioned with a negative one, which means that most of the time they compensate by probably accelerating in the air and reducing their elapsed time. Then you've got percentage of delay flights. This line over here is the average of these 18 airlines, which are the major um, air carriers within the US. This is an average of approximately 38% of the flights being delayed. And you can see how Delta Airlines is actually, again, at last. So it's actually really good. Then the last one is the number of destinations. Once again, Delta Airlines is top five. So it's a really good option. So I'm not from the US and I don't know much about these airlines, but based on these statistics, what you can see right away is that regardless of the quality of service that they give, when it comes to the delay, Delta Airlines is actually one of the top airlines. Um, just keep in mind that I'm using data from 2018, so this can be an outlier, meaning that it could be a very good year for Delta Airlines compared to the other airlines or a bad year for the other ones. So take this with a pinch of salt because this is a one-year analysis. Now, in terms of the modeling, I already mentioned that this is a binary classification problem, so a zero, once again, is a flight that is going to arrive on time, and a one is going to be a delayed flight. 
I tested six different types of algorithms and I divided them into two groups uh, because of the way how I evaluated them. The first five were back trees, random forest, other boost, gradient boosted trees, and the XG boost, and then separately deep neural networks. So a total of over 70 models were actually tested. And you can see on the right, this is uh, MLP neural network, which is, I believe is the best model. You can see the architecture of the model here, which is quite simple. It just has added uh, dense layers going from 50, 30, 15, 5, and 1. And then I'm using a sigmoid activation because it's a, a binary problem, so that's why I've got a 1 here. And you can see also the compile and the fitting details below. And you see that the epoch that I have is 25 because of the size of this data set. Unfortunately, I couldn't run more than 25 epochs. I did try, but my um, laptop kept on crashing. That takes us to the model evaluation. Because this is an imbalanced data, then accuracy was not going to be enough to um, evaluate the performance of the models. So I had to go and generate confusion matrices, uh, calculate precision, recalls, and F1, which are all associated to the confusion matrix, of course. Then you can see these two spreadsheets. So the one in the bottom is going to be what I classified as my machine learning models one. And you'll see that you've got all base uh, line trees, back of trees, random forest, etc., all the way down to the XG boost. And here are your metrics, precision, call, and accuracy. Now you'll see that in some of them it says without deep delay, which means the partial delay. And in other ones, you'll see that it says with the partial delay. And you also have the data classified as imbalance and balance. What this means is that I wanted to try to prove my point that when you actually take into account those variables that will bias your model, then your accuracy is going to dramatically increase. So we can see an example here, the other boost. You've got with the partial delay and without the partial delay. So when you put this into account, you are telling the model already when your flights are delayed. So look at your values, your metrics. You've got precision of 84, recall of 82, accuracy of 81.72. And this is only adding one, and there's quite a lot that you can add. So you can imagine that it's quite easy to get an accuracy above 90 or 92, 93%. But when you take that out of the model with exactly the same architecture, you see that you've got 65, 54, and almost 65 here. So that gives you an idea of the impact of adding those variables that will bias your model. So I didn't look at this to classify or to get what I chose to be my best model from this group, but to the ones that are balanced data and the ones that have only um, without the departure delay. So you can see here my metrics around 70% accuracy, 63% recall, which is low, and 69% precision. Not the best uh, metrics, but this is actually not taking into account those variables that I mentioned before. Now, if we look here above, this is the neural networks, MLP. I classify them into three different nodules because of the number of models I've tested within each one of them. And you'll see in green again, what I consider to be the best one out of each one of them. So if we concentrate on this group, the MLP neural networks part two, you see in green what I consider to be my best model. So this is precision, recall, accuracy, and the F1. You see all the values are above 80, but this is going to be my macro average. So those values are quite good, not as good as if you add all of those other predictive uh, features, but still they're quite solid. That takes us to the model five, like the individual performance evaluation. You see here the loss and the accuracy plot. Um, this is not great when you look at the accuracy, but what this is telling me is that most probably the model is underfit, and that's why this is not behaving like going from a typical lower to a quite a high value. So that means that I could still get more out of my model with only a slightly more complicated architecture. The loss is the same thing. So, but what this is telling me is that eventually this might converge. So I'm going to have to find a way to increase these epochs. I'm um, not sure how I'm going to do that, but that's going to be one of the, the way forwards of this project. Got the confusion matrix here and then the classification report and this is the final performance matrix but for what i'm trying to predict which is my one which is a delay flight so the accuracy at the end is almost 86 the precision is going to be almost 85 recall 75 and the f1 score of close to 80 so those are pretty solid um, metrics for a model that is trying to predict the the part, um, the delay flight before you're even in the airport so as a summary recommendation, um, from the ADA done, it seems as Delta Airline and Alaska Airline are two of the uh, most reliable airlines in terms, of, in terms of flight arriving on time. It is quite hard to create an ML model to predict flight delays without giving them any feature that could actually affect the models by biasing them. Whereas the deep neural networks were more time consuming, but easier to tune. Um, the better metrics uh, show you that it's actually worth that time and therefore the predictions are gonna be a lot better. 
The best model ended up being with an accuracy of over 85. However, a series of categories believed to be key could not be taken into account due to a shortage of data. And these are actually everything that is related to the weather. The way forward is to engineer a time of the day category to understand if there are any time windows during the day uh, more prone than others to have delays. Then we do the ADA, but actually not only with one year, but try to add the 10 year historical data to come up with more solid conclusions like the recommendations that I made about Delta Airlines. And then scrape the weather information such as temperature, humidity, wind, and precipitation, and add it to the current data set. And this is known to have quite a, a big impact on the flights being delayed or not. And this data is available. It's just quite a, a lot of time to add it into one of these data frames. And then rerun the ML and the neural network of models selected as the best performance. But now just select one city and the top 20 destinations chosen by the number of arriving flights. Probably the top ones such as um, Chicago or Atlanta are going to be interesting ones. And then try to double check this with the, my ground truth because I know already what happened with these flights and have a proper idea of what happened uh, with my models, how they perform. So that's all I have for you. So thank you very much for your attention.